Hey guys, welcome back to Civilian Tactical. This is no longer a 30 cent round of birdshot from Walmart. Instead, it's a hand cast lead slug weighing seven eighths of an ounce that is extremely light on the recoil. And as you're about to see in the next 15 seconds, this thing shoots incredibly well. But here's what I discovered. If you want to buy one of these ultralight low recoil slugs, you're coughing up about $1.50 per slug, whereas birdshot costs only 30 cents. And so by getting the help of our professional reloader to transform this birdshot into an ultralight lead slug, you're gaining about a dollar of value every time you shoot one of these things. Now you've heard of girl math but taking cheap birdshot and turning it into more expensive slugs and convincing yourself you're saving money is what I like to call boy math. But are these things accurate? Are they deadly? And what does it take to make these things? Well, we're gonna find out. And since I know you wanna see if they're reliable, now that we know that they're reliable, that's instantly one test out of the way. And for our accuracy test, I don't think we could do anything simpler. We're just gonna do five regular slugs on the top from about 50 yards, and then we're gonna do five of our home cast slugs. And this is gonna tell us if they fly accurately or if the home casting causes imperfections that makes them wobble or deviate. Because I did pull some of these slugs aside as our professional reloader was making these to show you that these slugs do have their quirks. Like that left one is totally fine, but our right one there you can see it's got all sorts of little bumps and that's just because of the heat of the lead as it was poured into the mold and you could chuck that out but we're just loading in everything first up we got five standard slugs these have a little bit of rifling on the slug themselves and the idea is that engages with the choke as it leaves your barrel and that imparts spin giving it stability but that's all a theory let's fire Next up for our five home cast slugs, you might be wondering why are these things yellow? And that's because you can either powder coat these things so that you don't get lead everywhere, or you can simply spray paint them. We opted for the spray painting method, at least my reloader did, and it's just simpler that way. Now the recoil on those was interesting. We're gonna save that for our recoil test, but look at this accuracy. On the bottom, we have our home cast slugs and on the top, we have the store-bought ones. And though it looks like this is a tighter group up here, the widest difference is actually the same as the bottom. So these seem to be just as accurate as rifled slugs, which is really cool. And you're gonna figure out how these things are made that allows them to be so dang accurate. But first I wanna do a test on our cinder blocks. You see, these slugs were born out of birdshot. So I wanna hit one of these cinder blocks with birdshot, even though we know it won't do much. Then I wanna smack the second cinder block with our store-bought rifled slug, just to show you the standard explosion that we'll get. And finally hitting our third one with our really light homemade slug, just to see how much lighter of an impact it makes than the one ounce. And yeah, I am bad at math, but seven eighths of an ounce is actually going to be lighter than one full ounce. That's, that's the way fractions work. Okay, first up we got bird shot, just regular old bird shot. Next up that store-bought one ounce rifled slug. Oh, that smacks good. And finally our home cast seven eighths of an ounce slug. Three, two, one. Hey, definitely not the same explosion, but good. And a cursory inspection of the rubble confirms this. Look, our first cinder block is peppered with the bird shot. The second one definitely had the more energetic explosion, but I kind of expected that since it was store-bought. And our third one still hit very hard and crumbled that cinder block, so I'm not disappointed at all. And to give you a little comparison of the weight difference between these different shells, we have a little kitchen scale. Regular bird shot, the whole shell weighs in at one and a half ounces. And then if we do a one ounce slug, it also weighs in at one and a half ounces, which makes me think that this guy is also going to weigh in at one and a half ounces, but it's actually a little bit lighter. Interesting. So you're not using all the lead from your bird shot when you make one of these home cast slugs. You're ending up with something a little bit lighter. 1.5 versus 1.2. And I'm curious about how much different they recoil from regular slugs. So for our first test, we're gonna do a home cast slug with a one ounce slug coming in right after it. And then after that, we're gonna kick it to the Magnum slug. Not bad. Oh, you definitely feel a difference. I would say it's about 30% more powerful. Next up, we got a home cast slug and then a Magnum one ounce slug. This thing spits a fireball. So first up, the regular one. 
not bad. Oh man, yeah, you feel it. That was about twice as much recoil easily from our home cast slugs. This is really starting to make me appreciate just how light the recoil is on these. It's even lighter than birdshot. And I'd say it's something I would feel comfortable handing to my wife or maybe kids if they're gonna be shooting shotgun because it's even lighter than regular birdshot. Now our final segments are gonna be testing this in ballistics gelatin and then going over the steps and tools it takes to make these home cast slugs. But first a word from our channel sponsors who keep everything running smoothly here. Now let's take a brief moment for me to show you a tool that I use immediately when I'm done filming these videos. And that's gonna be my 945 Industries everyday carry bag that holds my pistol. This thing is insanely quick to deploy. So go grab yourself a 945 Industries bag and holster and use code BAG10 for 10% off at 945 Industries. This is the code. I'll put a link in the description. Go grab yourself a bag. You are gonna absolutely love this thing and you're gonna use it as much as I have for the last year. Back to the video. All right, firing our seventh eighth of an ounce home cast slug into the ballistics gelatin. We got the slow-mo on standby. Three, two, one. What a beautiful slow-mo. Here we got our entrance, and that's actually a pretty nice cookie cutter shape. The expansion, if you look back at that, was really big as it came up a few times rebounding. Now it zipped straight through. These other little lines are from previous hits, and it shot right out the back. No fragmentation, no deviation, just straight in and out. Now you can insert your Taco Bell jokes here, but take a look at that. The exit wound is so small compared to the entrance. That is night and day. And I know everybody wants to know how it's made, so let's set up our table of science and show you the pieces. Keep in mind, I didn't reload these. These were all done by a professional reloader, but in theory, there are parts out there that you can purchase, and I'm not gonna show you how it's done. I'm just gonna show you what was used. These are all the components used. First up, you're just gonna need some standard birdshot. You either use a tool or a knife to chop off the top, which I'm not gonna show you how to do, and you'd be left with something like this. Then you would take the lead shot, pour it into your little melting tool, and you would heat this up and melt the lead, which again, I'm not gonna show you how to do, but then you would pour that in theory into a Lee mold like this, pour it through the little hole, and it looks really weird on the inside, but this will cast a nice little slug, which you're going to set aside. You can either paint it or powder coat it. Then you're gonna take your empty shell, you're gonna grab some of these wads and you would toss those in. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do that because we don't wanna do that on YouTube. Then you would end up with something that looks like this, and you would throw it into this little claw machine, clamp it down, spin the wheel, and it'll give it a nice little roll crimp. And of course, the last step, you're gonna need a shotgun. You'll just place your shotgun shell inside of your shotgun. And just like that, you've created a seventh, eighth ounce slug out of a regular round of bird shot. So I'm curious, what side are you on? Are you gonna be on team home cast 12 gauge shotgun slug? Or are you more on store-bought slug for that ultimate performance with a little bit of extra recoil? Let me know in the comments and subscribe for more.